to It's Just Different with your host, Ty. All right. Um, let me see how I'm word this. Um, somehow, I don't know what happened. So, I turned myself in. They take me to the precinct. I saw it all on the news, a bunch of bullshit. And Shorty Nelson came back to my cell. Because he always called me Dabby Baby. He never called me Dab. He always called me Dabby Baby. He said, you're Dabby Baby. I ain't got nothing to do with this. And that always stuck in my mind all them years. I said, why would he say that? Because me and Mike know he a publicity hound. He want to be on the front page with you handcuffed to him. And yeah, I got him, you know. Heavy yeah, heavy cat now. But for him to say that, he said, yo, I ain't got nothing to do with that. It threw me. I was like, wow. Now, I'm going to have to put a little gap in here because this is the part of the story that y'all don't know. But if you really want to know, it ain't, it ain't, it, 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 shit going to start a lot of shit, but I, I don't care. I got a gun. I don't care. But uh, I was told to plead guilty. Now, I had went to trial for a case I had blue. On the drug shit. The case I was on the run for, yeah. I went to trial and lost. They gave me six or twelve. Black judge. Judge Woods out of Oslo. He gave me a play. He could have slayed me. But he respected my gangs. He told me, he said, if you hadn't been messing with drugs, you'd be a hell of a lawyer. And this is what Judge Woods told me. So he gave me that, right? So now they told me to copy out. I said, listen, I just took a case of trial that I was guilty of. What makes you think I ain't gonna take this shit to trial and I ain't do it? If I did this shit and I went to trial, what makes you think I ain't gonna take this to trial? All right, so the only charge I had was rape. What happened to assault and all the other shit that usually go with that? I never had that, I just had a rape. All right, whatever. All right. Uh, at that time, they didn't have DNA. They had a thing called serology. And serology is, is, a, is a blood secretor. You secrete in your sweat, your saliva, your urine, your blood type. So the only thing they had was the secretion, which was, I think it matched something like that. Who, whoever, the two do it, yeah, her, I'll get to that part. <laughs> whoever she had sex with was a secretor and had the same bloodline I did, all right? So they kept trying to get me to cop out, kept trying to get me to cop out. I'm not pleading guilty to this shit. So uh, we go to trial. But before we go to trial, this is what I mean by check with the laws of chess on paper. I'm gonna show you. Don't worry about the numbers I'm saying, just listen. It's 30-30 and it's 30-20. 3020 says that you must give me a trial within a prescribed period of time. Speedy trial. 30, speedy trial, exactly. 3030 says you must give me a speedy trial. There's no time. So you had a chess game come in. I'm hitting my, I'm reading this shit, I'm saying, but Supreme, you jump bail. That's all I kept saying, you can't use this argument because you jump bail. Then I ran across a case. This is what I mean about doing your research. I ran across a case, a girl I've been arrested in New York five times for shoplifting. And every time she got arrested, they gave, she gave him a different name, right? <laughs> so the fifth time, her lawyer filed to dismiss it for a speedy trial. The judge looked at him like, you got your mind in you. Is it our job to keep track of it? No, it's their job. They must use due diligence and apprehending you. I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm gonna file it, see what happens. I file it. I see where people got a little shaky. I said, oh, I might got something here. Right? I didn't know that my trial date was that close because I had been in jail then about 
going on two years. But I didn't know that my date was that close. So when they gave me the date for the hearing, it was actually pre-trial. Start trial, I don't know this. So I'm telling Jay, hey, whoa, whoa, y'all got a motion that y'all got to handle. So, Mr. Debs, we dismissed that. I said, how you gonna dismiss my motion like that? You can't bother with talk. Now I'm going bananas. The lawyer put in 30-30 when he should have put in 30-20. I knocked him out right in the courtroom. Right there in the courtroom. They took me to the back. Judge came back, he was robing everything. He said, Mr. Dabbs, are we gonna have any more disturbance out of you today? I said, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you now, I don't know what the day gonna bring. I'm on trial for my life. So we're gonna give you a couple of days. So when I when we come back to court, the lawyer's standing way over there. I said, Motherfucker, you on his team anyway, motherfucker. Yeah. That's what he's supposed to be. But but I got to say, after that he did his job. He did his job to the utmost. He did his job. So um, I pick a jury. It was six about f almost a week. Cause like I told you, they was. I'm telling my bro. I, I didn't know they had that many white people in the world. I was like, God <laughs> damn! Ain't no black people around here. Boom, boom, no, no, none of them. No, please, I don't want none of them. A few of them was, they was on canes. I said, they, they might have hung a nigga back in the yeah, day. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't want them on my kids. You know, so we found it, and it was one guy from Peace Kill. You know him too, Mike. I can't remember his name. When you on trial, they, they'll ask the panel or the jurors. Does anybody know anybody involved with this case that you want to be, right? So when I look back and I seen him, I said, oh, shit, he used to play ball with us and everything. I look back, I said, oh, we worked at the VA. I said, oh, okay, I might have me a monkey here. So, you know, I ain't, I don't even want to look at him. I'm so scared. I'm Please don't say you know me. You understand what I'm saying? He, so now what they'll do is they'll pick 12 people and they put them in a the box. They're not sworn in yet, but now you have a thing that's called a voir dire. And a voir dire is when you, you get a chance to ask the jury your name, where you work at, how you live, how you vote, you know, shit like that, you know. And then from there, you get to determine if you want them to sit on your jury or not. Right? So uh, when we found that there was one guy, chess again. One guy kept saying he retired. So we went on down the line. I kept calling the lawyer, come here. Ask him what he retired from. He said, why? I said, I don't know, just something. He said, I don't know, I've been retired now four or five years, but he wouldn't say what you retired. What are you retired from? Oh, I'm an XDA. Oh, he got to go. Immediately, he getting up off there. And I ain't got to use no challenge for that. He got, and his 15 police he's getting ready to testify. He out of here. Chess on paper. Now, if I hadn't went back, then to show you how it comes backwards, I had a lady that said, the, the prosecutor asked her, says, uh, if I find Mr. Dabb guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, would you have a problem bringing back a verdict? She said, yeah. She said, because you're afraid my brother, I put my head down, I said, damn, why didn't she shut up? <laughs> that guy needed up. You know, the DA got out of there. <laughs> then I had a young banker, a white dude, young banker. They asked him the same question. Do you think that you would have a hard time if I command this? He said, yeah, because I don't think cocaine should be a drug. I said, oh my God, you know he out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you know he out of there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now they had one lady, well, they had a few ladies, but they had one lady, she was drop dead gorgeous. And I mean, every male in there beside me, wanted her. The judge, the DA, my lawyer, or the jury, I said, no, 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 she got to go. So my lawyer <laughs> said, no, I want to keep her. No, 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 no. And he said, why? I said, look at her. 
Tell me what story she hasn't heard about a man trying to get in her pants. Look at her. That's right. And you think, oh, I want her on the jury? You crazy as hell. He said, let me get her. I said, what's she trying to get? A phone number, some motherfucker off my shit? <laughs> he said, no, nah, just let me get her. I said, all right, go ahead. You know she's the only one held out? She said, every time the jury would come in, she would look at me and smile. I would turn my head. Like, nah, I ain't going for that shit. That's that. That Friday night, when they came back in, and when she didn't look at me, I knew it was over. I knew it was over. She was the only one holding out. And I didn't want her on the jury. I said, no. Nah. Because I'm, I'm looking. She, I'm, when I said drop dead gorgeous, but she was drop dead. And I don't call too many Caucasian women drop dead gorgeous. But she was drop dead gorgeous. And I mean, it just, the sheriffs, everybody was talking about it. I was like, man, hell no. You don't be sitting up here, everybody trying to get a phone number. She ain't paying attention. This <laughs> is crazy. No, she got to go. She got to go. So what happened was, um, they found me guilty. And it was strange because when they, that night, that Saturday, that Friday night, it was late Friday night, and the lady was cleaning up in the bullpens. And I was waiting on a verdict. So I had my suit coat behind my head and I was laying on the bench. And she said, oh my God, she, she scared me. But I scared her because she wasn't expecting nobody to be in there. She said, that's your case upstairs? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, God bless you, boy. I wish you guys thank you, ma'am. And uh, when I walked back in that courtroom and then she came back and when she had her head down, I said, I'm done. But what, was, what I was getting ready to say is, to this day, I couldn't tell you what the judge was saying. Because all this shit kept echoing in my head was guilty, 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 guilty. What the f, f was y'all looking at? Guilty, 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 guilty. That shit echoed. So as he's talking, I'm picking my paperwork up. I'm walking to the back of the, and the sheriff said, where you going? I said, I'm going back here. He said, the judge told you. I said, he ain't talking to me. He ain't talking to me. I don't want to hear that shit. I went on the cell. When I went back to the jail that night, the police didn't even search me. They looked at me and said, Mm -mm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, that's my phone. I don't know. <laughs> when I, no, no, I don't know. When I was, you been in to West, the old jail? You know how they got the cells here and the cells in the back? I was all the way in the back. Every dude was on his cell gate. Tell them I came back that night. They was all. And when they see me, I didn't say nothing, they just dropped their head. Like everybody, everybody just dropped their head. What? Man, what about that phone? They don't want nothing anyway. <laughs> um, everybody in that, that whole side just dropped their head because they were saying, if I lose, they're in trouble. But that's all they kept saying. They said, yo, if, 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 if Supreme blow, we done. Cause, and it was some big cases. Yeah, you know, I, you had the Morris Brothers case then. All the bank robberies. You had the um, the Nassau kind of uh, thing. Uh, not Nassau. What's the name of that county right over here? Um, the, the, no, not Duchess. Putnam. No. Rock Captain Z. You Rockland, 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 Rockland. Rockland. Yeah. Rock. Remember that big Rockland case they had? Yeah. That was going on at that time. Yeah, it was a bunch of us on trial then, man. Then you had two dudes from Sing Sing. They had killed the guy. They was on trial. Wow. Yeah. It was a bunch because we had to do some show. They had them dudes that that was from the NIAC thing. Man, you should have seen how they was bringing them dudes to court, man. Helicopters, dudes on the roofs. One guy was, two guys was in a... a um, a station wagon laying down in the back with guns like that. Yeah, they were scared of them. They was the ones that that robbed the bank and then you went. Yeah, yeah. Then you went more. Yeah, yeah. So Joe, Joe and Chester Mall, that's my baby there. Side of Chicago. <laughs> Side of Chicago. That's my baby there. John. So what what was that like then when you were in there now in prison for something you said you didn't do and and, and what was the process of the appeal? Pro you know. Of, okay. Of how well, it first of all. Um, 
they placed my life for those nine years, they placed my life in, in a pearl. Rapists, is, they don't last too long in jail. Put it that way. Child molesters, even less. So here I am with a rape case, and I'm well known. So how are they supposed to treat that? How am I supposed to treat that? I have one beef behind it, a dude. You know, we went knife to knife. You're a rapist, I'm not a rapist, bro. I don't give a fuck how you bounce it, flip it. Uh, he kept talking, so I went in his mouth. When he came back, he had a knife. I don't need no knife to fight you, bro. But the dudes that were standing there, they had knives. This is your prime here, and they gave me a knife. I wouldn't worry about no knife. But I could see the way that he was holding it. He really didn't know. I always tell guys this. If you don't have a knuckle game, you ain't got no knife game. Because you got to use your hands. Correct. You understand? So if you can't fight, knife, I'm, I'll give you two of them. You can have two of them if you want them. I ain't worried about them. But um, I didn't get too much of a problem because of who I was. And how I carried myself. Um, I ran the recreation department in damn near every jail I went in. In Green Haven, I ran basketball, football, I had a football team, all that. I did all that stuff. So everything that you do to occupy your mind, I did that. But I stayed in my books. Um, you have some guys that get um, wrapped up in the jailhouse politics, you know. Um, like I was ILC, I was an inmate later on. I was the chairman. I represented the inmates, so they must have held me in some kind of esteem, high esteem, because they kept voting me in there. You understand? But um, sex offenders have a, a, a problem. I didn't have that weight because, first of all, I knew that I wasn't a sex offender. First of all, so I wouldn't worry about it. And second of all, I knew I could carry myself well. And third, I could fight. I could fight. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not saying that to brag, but I can fight. So, um, when it comes down to that, or if it comes down to where one of us got to go in that box, I've faced that before, I've done it before. It's not something to be proud of, but I've done it before, I've done it a couple of times. But um, it makes you hard, it makes you you know, like you could, like I see kids now and you feel sorry for them, you know, so you try to help them. And then they start talking like they reach. So I leave them alone because uh, I was blessed as a young man. Mike could attest to this that the older hustlers, when we came up, they didn't allow that. You wasn't going to run around here like no asshole. Bay, uh, uh, Junior, James Curry, and them? Oh, hell no. They didn't let us on the block sell no drugs. Huh? They didn't even let us sell no drugs. No. 14, yeah. We had to hustle. Mm. Only hustle was you had to go rob somebody. We had to stick up. <laughs> we had to stick up. And all we had to do burglaries. Okay. They didn't let us on the block. Man, y'all get your little ass about here. Yeah. But when they did, when we got like 15, 16, they started schooling us. But they schooled us the proper way. Correct. The proper way. You understand? I've been in spots where I tell guys this. I said, you know, I remember when older people used to take us in when the police was chasing us. Boy, get your ass in here. What you done did now? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, your grandmother. You understand? Shit, all of us. She's just looking at me and shaking her head. That boy, they're crazy. <laughs> She's always that boy, they're crazy. <laughs> but uh, they taught us the right way, you know. Uh, they pushed education. They made us. You better. They, hey, don't you supposed to be in school, boy? I'm gonna tell your mother. And they were these also hustlers. They, I'm gonna tell your mother. I see your ass out here. And they tell on you. 
When you become a man, you respect it. And you knew what they were trying to do. I'm doing wrong, and I do it the same way. I tell kids, I tell mine the same way. Bro, you don't want this. You think you want this. You don't want this. I said, you take a man that works nine to five. When he go home, pick his shoes off, wash his butt, get something to eat, he's all right till the next morning. That's right. But not a hustler. That's right. Not a hustler. If that phone ring and you ain't been sleeping two hours, you gonna get up. You gotta get up. I know, I'm gonna get up. That's right. And, I mean, you got me going in out of places when I was 17, 18 years old. You got me going to spots out of town. I don't even know the name of the city, and I'm in this city sticking up something. I don't know where the hell I'm at. They, they just say, well, I know they good, so wherever they go, I'm going to follow them. But, yeah, um, they taught us, you know, like, I can't name too many of them dudes that didn't have a legitimate business. They were hustlers, but they had legitimate businesses. Hmm. This is how they taught us. That's right. Bay and them had a, a club. Tommy Dabbs and them had a club. Junior Curry, Bay, uh, uh, Alexander Hammonds had a club. Uh, Miss Marie, down across the street from me. No, no, you weren't even born then. Across, uh, you know how you get the back of Bowman Towers? Mm -hmm. That block? Yeah. That was all houses back That's then. That was all black yeah. people back then. I seen the pictures. Yeah, that was all day. black people back then. Now, not don't get to the street. You know how you come down those back steps? Yeah. And, and you know, you, you know that little, I think a bench or something over there? Yeah. All that was houses. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Bones, the Hollivans, uh, the Pittmans, uh, y'all lived in there, yeah. That was all houses, bro. Where the park is right now, that was houses. That wasn't no damn house or no park. That was housing up there, bro. Right. The lower South Street, um, that lower South Street, is it South Street? Is that South Street? Yeah, South, that's South, South Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Catlin Courts is, yeah, across the street, Leroy Dabbs and them lived in houses right there. All them was houses right there. Uh, uh, Snap and their mom used to live down in there. Across from, uh, um, yeah, the big young, right back Bowman, further down, yeah, 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 down there too, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah all of them was. That whole situation, all that was black. All that was black, bro. All that was black. Matter of fact, all the black places that we usually live in Spanish now. Yeah, yeah. And then you take that block, if you go down Lower South Street, from the baseball field all the way back, blacks. Park Street, black. That, that one section of Park Street where you pass the school, then you go all the way up to that turn, black. You had like two white, two or three white families, one Puerto Rican family, everything else there was black. Mm -hmm. So so getting back no, go ahead, real, yeah. real, real quick, yeah. how did you end up coming home from the case that you know that you was pretty much known for or famous for, was the first one in history? To well, the there was a brother from Illinois. I had been in contact with him. Um, Lester Davis, good brother, good brother. He's still down, too. Um, I just sent some money a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was fighting it on the technicality, on the, um, but they got this other thing called uh, RV, so it's almost like DNA, but it's like uh, they use it to get from real old blood samples. Mm -hmm. That's what he was fighting under, because his samples were so old, they said him about the match, but he put me on that direction, right? So when I got the thing from him, I looked at him and said, damn, this is like a biology course. This is crazy. But after, it took me about a week. I finally read through that shit. It was about 80 pages. I finally read through it. And... 
what caught my eye was and where I knew that I could work it. And when it said, uh, this is a fingerprint, that gave me my, my, my idea. He said, this is a fingerprint. You are the only one that has this fingerprint. Let me read that shit again. I read it again. So I said, well, I know I didn't have sex with this female. So whatever they found in there ain't mine. Shit, let's go. Uh, I filed for a uh, former porpoise, which means some more Latin bullshit they run down here. Former porpoise <laughs> means to file as a poor person. I'm poor, I don't got no money. So anything I do in this courtroom, y'all gotta pay for it, because I'm broke. Um, they denied me the former porpoise. They gave me the hearing, but they denied me. I said, what good is the hearing if I ain't got the evidence? It don't do no good. So he hit me to this guy in Jersey called Father McCluskey. Uh, he runs a program out there called Centron Ministry. Only thing they deal with is death row cases. I ain't got no death row case, so I wrote him. And I kept writing him. And I kept writing him. And I kept writing him. And he said, yeah, this dude a pain in the ass. So he wrote me back. He said, uh, do you have a draft for this? I said, oh, yes, I do. I put that shit, I took the last stamps I had, put on an envelope. Got it out of there. All right. He said, shit, I ain't got to do nothing with this. He said, but I don't take death row. I don't take these kind of cases. He said, but what I will do, I'll make you an offer. I said, what's the offer? And y'all probably heard of the case. They made a movie out of it called Blue Eyes. Um, I don't know how all that other shit happened, but this guy got convicted of killing two highway patrolmen down in Texas. He didn't do it. They had him on death row. Getting ready to execute him in like 30 days. A guy in Oklahoma happened to read the paper. He said, oh, they taking him to the court for some shit I did. Yeah, the dude as he killed the two cops, he was in jail in Oklahoma on another body. So he told him, he said, man, that man didn't do that shit I did there. So now I had to file a fourth, fourth no, make a mistake called Fed court. It's called a 2255, it's known as the habeas corpus. It's the most powerful legal machine you'll ever have in your hand. And all it says is produce the body. Habeas corpus is body, habeas is produce. Produce the body. When you put that in court, everybody get to jumping. Uh oh, what's happening here? I got on that one time. Huh? I got on, out on Habeas Corpus one time. One time to the... We'll go violation. Yeah, yeah. Habeas Corpus is the main piece of work, bro. Yeah, so uh, what was that? You were talking about you had to do Habeas Corpus. Oh, yeah, right. So, uh, I couldn't go under that because I didn't have the evidence. I know I'm innocent, but I don't have the material in my hand. So when I filed for the former porpoise, what says it said, now nah, if you want this shit, you'll pay for it yourself. So now I figure, yeah, something's shaky. I write to um, I forgot the company name, man. Or like the exonerous people? No, they they um they collect you know, all that, sh like you can shit oh, in like a the box DNA? and put it there. And, like you know, a DNA type like of thing. Yeah, but yeah, but they, like yeah, like a lab, right. It is a lab. They had three specimens. Each specimen was $900. I had no money. Whoa. No money. So now I'm getting the scheme. And like I said, the penitentiary is a reflection of society. So now where in the hell in penitentiary I'm gonna get twenty seven hundred out? Somebody got to get bamboozled, finessed, finagled, robbed. But I gotta get this twenty seven hundred dollars. That's all that's in my mind. And central ministry, 
after I did the legal research for them, they paid for the DNA test. Oh, wow. That's how I got out. They gave me $2,700. They sent it to the lab. They did everything for me. Only because I did the research for that death row case for him. So that was the trade-off, because he didn't deal with rapes and robberies and shit like that. He only dealt with death row cases. So he went outside of his normal thing to help me out. So if you asking me to do this, hell yeah, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to do it. So uh, when I got it, um, like I was telling you, I didn't even know I was... The results of none of that shit. I didn't know nothing. I was just in the ball. I know it got done. They, uh, Philip Boyd <laughs> came and took the blood. <laughs> for peace kill. Yeah, Philip Boyd came. He took the blood. Me and kicked it. You know. But y'all, I'm like this, bro. I never have a problem with cops. I tell people this all the time. You got to feed your family. You got insurance, you got pension, you got um, health insurance for your kids, all right? If you do your job, I have no problem with you. But when you start adding that other shit in the game, when you start putting shit in my pocket, when you start lying on the stand, when you start doing a whole lot of foul things that these police do to black people in America, now is when I have a problem. Mm. That's, when I, that's why I said... I told somebody, I've been out of jail and that's as long as I've ever been out of jail in my life. I've been out of jail about six years, five, six years now, right, right? Six years. Yeah, yeah six yeah, years, yeah. something like that, right? I ain't going no more. I don't care if it's for jaywalking, we shooting it out. I'm not going to jail no more. So, <laughs> so did you, uh, or could you, legally, yeah. being how you was convicted of a crime you didn't commit, did you sue like sue the state or was it back to the chess game <laughs> back to the chess game uh let me see how can i put this for you in new york state they have a thing called a um, unlawful conviction act 8b you have to be innocent to sue when I got my case heard and reheard in Westchester County Supreme Court, they gave me a reversal and released me ROR, even though I still had a 25 year sentence. They had to release me ROR. Um, the DA chose not to go back to trial. I was waiting for that. Oh my God, I got the DA in my. I, I got the DNA in my back pocket. Whoa, I'm in my mind, I was gonna throw one big party. <laughs> so y'all better get all y'all get now, y'all ain't gonna see me no more. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere and just go crazy. But uh, yeah, uh, so what they do is they dismissed it on the in, in the interest of justice. You're not innocent, mm. but you can't get no money either. Oh, and this is the only jurisdiction that's like that. If if this would have been Manhattan, uh, uh, yeah, Manhattan County or any of those other counties, uh, 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 not county, uh, they call them judicial departments. Is Westchester, Orange County, Brooklyn, Queens, and that makes up a judicial district. Now, then you have problems when it comes to law as far as that is concerned because this jurisdiction ruled this way. We got the same case, same set of facts, same argument, but you will rule this way and he'll rule that way. And then the second judicial department, which covers peak scale, if you're not innocent, you don't get a dime. Mm -hmm. So I did nine years. But then again, you have to keep in mind also that, remember, I told you I had a 6 to 12. 6 to 12, that's right. Right. So I was finagling all that. Of course, I'm trying to get 80 million. I asked for 80 million. They don't be like, this boy's crazy. <laughs> Give me 80 million. Now I'm going to change the world. Correct. But, uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, it, it, it's, you know, sex is a very repressive uh, 
topic in this country because there's it's been so much garbage and so much racism attached to it. You know, there's a thing, a podcast I watched the other day. I wanted to laugh so bad because I knew this was going on, but I just didn't. Do you know that them white women was black slave men? Absolutely. But I'm talking about documentation. I had no documentation. They got documentation now. That's why, that's why their husbands was coming home and killing them. Yeah. They just castrate them. Yeah. Well, they yeah. they yeah. said, well, you, you ain't got to worry about you because he's going to castrate them. And then they gonna go hunting and do what they want to do. They ain't worried about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, they had one lady seeing that she had cages where they couldn't grow, but so much. Yeah, I think I seen you that. See, oh, yeah, that's yeah, shit. Oh, that's yeah, shit disgusting, yeah. man. That shit yeah, turned me all cages. bad, man. You see the movie yeah. Mandingo? Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, Mandingo. Yeah. Man Dingo, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I seen that, yeah. If you get an opportunity, there's there's a series called The Falconers. The Master of Falconers, The Mistress of Falconers, and The Return of Falconers. The dude gave me those books and gave me three days to read them shits. I ran through them, them shits is official. Mike, when I say official, them shit. You know how it is, you get a good novel, and you locked in, it's like, man, I ain't going outside. I'm right here. You know, yo, you come in the yard? Nah, man. Next wreck. I ain't go out there. So I ain't going out there. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing out there anyway. What you gonna do? Smoke some bud, walk around the yard, talk shit. Correct. Do the same shit every day. So you let know? me ask this real quick. Look, right. like, just a couple more questions. Get you out of here, OG. Is this part one or is this it? Uh, this is all. Oh, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna spice and dice it up for you, man. Don't worry. No, about I it. am, yeah. bro. Just, just let me know in advance. That's so, all I know. Just let me know. Now you experienced something that you know. Um, that a lot of parents don't really experience with the, you know, having to deal with losing a child. Yeah. And especially how you lost your son. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you talk about that? What do you want to know? Uh, the, that, that, that that incident leading up to it, because my understanding you was with your son that day, early that morning, and I was with him that night. That night and everything leading up to that well, incident. And at, if you can. Me, him, and I don't know if the other person won his name in, so I'm not going to say his name. But uh, me, him, and the third person, I went to New York for some people. They wanted to get some PCP, and they didn't have no connect. I had to connect. So I charged them, I went to New York, got the PCP, came back, but they wasn't where they were supposed to be. So we was at Dunbar, Dunbar Heights. I see my son out there, and I see this other individual. So I know they smoke, so we smoked. And uh, we walked, he had a bike, it had just stopped raining. And uh, we walked from Dunbar to Bowman. But before we got to Bowman, we got up here by this um, old folks on, on Main Street, and I noticed that he had his jacket open, and I could see the gun. I said, man, close your damn coat, man. He said, all right, Pop. So we had a rule, me and him. We had a rule that if we caught each other, one of us dusted. We either take the, the gun or we take the bullets. So we came in Bowman, and I said, yo, man, give me that gun. He said, yo, Pop, I'm going to send Maine upstairs right there. I said, I'm going to say a name. <laughs> I'm going to take send Maine upstairs and get some bud, and I'm going home. I'm going straight back out of the ice. So I gave him some bags and stuff. So I took care of my shit, and I went across the street. And um, I'm taking care of my stuff, and... Um, Somebody runs over and says, yo, pop, you know, because that's, like, I got a few young dudes in here that I, like, mentor, you know, and they call me pop, or, you know, so I don't care, but, you know, uh, see, yo, man, they just shot Hasim. So I knew that he was having problems up on Divot, because there was wars up there, because they had them dudes that was from out of town. They thought they were just going to come up there and set up shop. That wasn't happening. 
But I knew that he had had a couple of shootouts up there. So I, I you know, so the first thing I'm doing, I load up and I'm getting ready to come up this way. And they said, no, nah, when I looked across the street in Bowman, I seen all of the fire trucks and the police. I said, damn, where am I over there? So I take the gun back in the house and I walk across the street and I see my son, he laying there. So when I walk over to him, he opened his eyes, and when he, I look, I'm looking right in the gunshot wound. The gunshot, I'm looking in the gunshot wound. I'm looking in the wound. And I'm looking in his eyes, and then he looked up at me, and he closed his eyes. So when he closed his eyes, I walked away, cause I knew he was dead. My man Hop was standing right next to me. Hop screamed, he broke. You know, Hop broke down. I was, I didn't care about who was breaking down. I just wanted to get out of there. So I got out of there. I just walked, you know, and. Uh, I um I went and stood by the fire hydrant across the moment by myself. I just stood there. Yeah. And a lot of things went through my mind. Murder was being the prevalent. Um, I made his life a little rough, you know, uh, between his mother beefing with him about me not being there, running the street, in out of penitentiary, getting high. He had a rough. <clears throat> Then I had to do nine years for that rape case. And when I left, he was young. When I came back, he was a man. Uh, this man been feeding himself. So I can come with all the goody two-shoes shit I want. I haven't gave that man nothing to eat in nine years. How can I tell him what to do? I can suggest. I mean, he respected me, wasn't no doubt about that. That part wasn't, uh, we never had that kind of problem. But, um, like I told him, you know, um, I sat him down. I said, if this is the road you think you want to go to, you're looking at him, that ain't the right road to go to. I said, but if you want this road, I'm going to give you this game. I'm going to give you anything I know. Almost. Um, but when that penitentiary door closed, it's gonna close. Because they got John Gotti, and you ain't got that much money. So I'm quite sure they can get you too. Just ask yourself, was it worth it? You know, and one of them days you'll be sitting in that cell a long way from home, Jack, and ain't nobody there but you. <clears throat> and this is what makes people lose their mind. Because what is there left to reflect on? You. All of your inconsistencies, all of your uh, uh, failures, uh, all of your problems is confined within those four walls. It's you. And if you can't accept that, hey, I made some mistakes. I did too, but I came up, and I don't blame my upbringing, but where else can I place it? You know, uh, you got me sleeping in the street at nine years old, 10 years old, because I don't want to go home and get physically abused. Come on. You know, so uh, I don't, blame the street. I learned everything I I know I learned in the street. Everything I learned, I learned the hard way. I wasn't, you know, given milk and cookies. They gave me barbed wire to chew on. You know, so uh, after I began to find self, I got knowledge of self uh, and I began to study and I see that the black men have done quite a few brilliant things in our existence. 
if we uh, take the time out to study and teach our children. Um, they always say, well, why does people have such low self-esteem? Because they was taught that. They was programmed that. It's, their, it's his job to, you know, I look at folks and I ask them, it's so simple. If you, uh, you a chess player? No. You play chess? <laughs> well, anyway, Mike right there, you know what I'm talking about. If a person makes a move and he puts his castle in your area, and you, whoa, what the hell are you doing over there? Now he's a problem. So now Mike going to figure out, say, I got to get him out of there mm -hmm. or destroy him, one or the other, but he got to get up out of there. So they tell us, black man, that we're shiftless, lazy, lazy. no education, don't want to do nothing. <laughs> they tell us all of this yeah. stuff, right? I'm telling you, yeah. But damn, how did this country get built? You know, they said they got so mad that the black people did such a good job in the White House, they called it the White House. They didn't want to call it the Black House. <laughs> Benjamin Banneker built the White House, a black man. Electricity, a black man. Shoes, a black man. Toothpaste, a black man. Combs, a black man. There's a poem. I don't know if you ran across him. I want this poem so bad. A dude gave it to me. I loaned it to somebody I could not remember. And that's one thing, man, you will learn to appreciate is wisdom. When you get documentation and stuff like that, you will learn to pre the whole, especially in prison, you learn to hold on to that documentation, you know? Oh, man. This dude and... Uh, what it came down to is this. Somebody said, yo, Mike, uh, so, 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 he going to kick your ass. Dude could be a straight punk. Mike said, ah, man, get out of here. I ain't remember that dude. <laughs> but dude said, yo, Mike, man, Mike Tyson, I'm looking for you. He going to fuck you up. Mike, oh, shit, this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. How am I going to figure this out? So I said all that to say, you spend billions of dollars to suppress the black man, but we ain't shit. Something don't match. If you're not a problem, I'm not spending no money to solve you. Well, man, if you don't get out of here, I kick you in your face. Get out of here. But if you're a real problem, I might, I might have to go to the drawing board. Oh, let, me see, let me put my windows up and make sure all my guns is loaded because this dude is a problem. The black man in America is a problem, bro. He's a problem. And Malcolm said that a long time ago. He said, when we as black people in this country, when we decide that we, gonna, that we had enough of this, you would be surprised at the countries that want to support us. And I'm going to show you how funny it is. And Mike always say, I'm a, I'm a professor. With this party, I wanted this part. Do you know how many countries fought against slavery during the Civil War? No. Ooh, read that sometime. It'll shock you. That's why, that's why France gave me the Statue of Liberty. That's why France and the United States beefing to this day. That's all the way back to the Civil War they've been beefing. Because France wanted to give the black man his freedom. In fact, if they don't know. Statue got chains on the feet. Got chains on the feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Google the original Statue of Liberty. See what, see what it was. It was a black woman. Yep. With yeah. Black. Yeah. They yeah. send that back. Mm. They made America send it back. Mm. So, oh, gee. Now we know it's it's, it's definitely a lot a lie. Po you know, Peace Skill Police says that. It, your son had accidentally, you know, shot himself, whatever have you, which we know that was BS. Yeah. What, how can I quote this and phrase this in the right way? Now, they said this, was anybody held, ever held responsible 
um, for the death of your son. Is, is there, you know, if it's a legal issue or this thing going on, if you don't want to talk about it because it's legalities, then I understand no, that. No, my, uh, my grandson, his son, is, um, he's preparing some things. Okay. He's, 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 uh, he's gathering information uh, from FOIL. Um, and we've got quite a few uh, documentations that things, you know, little small things like uh, ballistics. No, something worse than that, really. Uh, these police had this little skirmish incident, whatever you want to call it. They goes home. You call them to the precinct, take them down to the county building, and give them brand new guns. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? They give officers new guns? Yeah. Now, you say he shot himself by accident with his gun. Did they take the bullet out? Ah, another thing. I'm glad you said that. Another thing. When Punchy, right, you know who that is, right? Punchy was the captain. Yeah. After the incident, a couple of hours had went by, he came down, I was still on the corner. And he said, your son was shot by a 32 caliber bullet. So I looked at my watch. It's just what I did. I looked at my watch. I said, did you get that information from the medical examiner? She said, no. <laughs> did you get that from the corner? And by then, he knew he had stepped in it, but it was too late. He said, no. So I said, well, how was you able to determine the caliber? Whenever there's an unusual death, that body is not to be only touched by two people. I didn't have homicide cases. I've been on, I've been prosecuted for a murder case, a few murder cases. So you can't tell me how that go. You have to let them examine that body. And the only way that you can tell me that it was a 32 caliber bullet in his chest is somebody went in there. Now, you can't say that you were trying to revive him because he was dead on arrival. He was already dead. So what are you doing cutting in his chest? You're not a medical examiner, are you? Are you a coroner? So what are you doing? Um, they had probable cause to stop him. See, and this is what I, you know, I keep trying to tell these folks in the family that you must look at this shit realistically and stop looking at shit through rose glasses. He had a warrant. That stopped everything right there. He had a warrant. So legally, they had the right to approach him. Number two, he was barred from that property. He wasn't supposed to be on that property. I wasn't supposed to be on it either. He's barred from that property. So now, yes, they got two reasons to approach him. Stop saying that they approach him for no reason. You making your own shit look bad. Because what you're doing is you're giving this dude a home run shot that it's not supposed to be a home run. Mm -hmm. This is why you're unable to get by with that shit about he shot himself accidentally. If I got a gun on a chain, and the gun is here, and we struggling. Ain't no way in the world I'm gonna have a gunshot wound here. I'm gonna have it here, down here, somewhere. But I'm not gonna have it in my chest. When I came to the parking lot and I looked at his body, I'm looking in the bullet wound. I'm looking in the bullet wound. And, I, and then he looked up, and when he looked up, he looked at me, and I looked at him. He closed his eyes. And when he closed his eyes, I knew he was dead. So it wasn't gonna need me to stay there no more. Hmm. Well, 
So OG, when it's said and done, what do you want to be known for? What do you want your legacy to be? And then on top of that, if, if there's a young kid that's watching this right now, that's probably kind of grew up similar to where how you did where, you know, uh, you know, wanted to escape abuse or whatever have you. And, um, you know, looking at, I got to go in the streets because I don't like my, you know, my living conditions and they watching this. What is it that you want to say to that young black kid right now? Uh, the odds are against you, bro. Just for the color of your skin. Don't let people sit here and tell you that it's not. It is. What you have to do, brother, is get an education, man. Go to school. When you get an education and you become a professional in whatever endeavor you choose, you can write your own check. Can't nobody tell you nothing. But you're gonna need credentials to get in certain places. Save your money. And I mean save every dime you can get. Because when you think you got enough money, you ain't got enough. Save your money, spend it wisely. Drugs. I'ma say it the French way, bro. It fucked my life up. I went from heroin to crack to cocaine to PCP to marijuana to blot of acid to LSD. I mean, we did it all. And it was fun. But you have to pay for that fun, bro. One way or the other, you're gonna pay. Your health, your mind, your family, it's going to cost you. If you decide that you want to be a hustler, <laughs> stop ratting, man. Don't rat, bro. If you do the crime, figure out a way. They're not going to, they don't have you, bro, until you start talking. If you keep your mouth shut, they ain't got nothing. I'm not endorsing crime i'm just saying if you have to pick that that way brother be very careful because it's dangerous it's a very treacherous tricky spot your main man can kill you they always send your main man because he's the only one that can get close to you they tried it a few times i'm telling you from experience brother put that gun down man if you want that gun, you better make sure you know what you're doing with it. There's a message in the bullet. If you want to know how important bullets is, read about the Mau Mau's in Africa, where the women were selling their bodies so that the men could have ammunition to fight the French that was colonizing our black people over there. That's a message in the bullet, my brothers. Peace. With that said, thanks for having you, OG. It's just different with Ty. Thank you, OG. Love you, man. Love you, dude. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be a singer right now.